In this tutorial we'll take a look at how to create the door panel you can see on the screen using a special shape cutter and the profile toolpath. We'll start with a vector that represents the outside of the panel and then import a vector that represents the cross-sectional shape of the form tool that we need to use to create the shape around the outside of the door. We'll then make some edits to that vector, add that tool to the tool database and then using the profile toolpath we'll then be able to profile round to create the raised shape that we can see on the screen. So at this point let's go and open a part that has the external profile for the wood panel. Cabinet door vector.crv file and we're open out onto the 2D view and you can clearly see the external vector representing the outside of our door panel. Now I'm now going to import the vector that represents the cross-sectional shape for the tool that we need to use to create the raised profile. So from the import vectors command I've got rpog.eps and that will bring that into the center of the screen. Now this represents the cross-sectional shape of the tool. Now we could have drawn this ourselves but in many cases the tooling suppliers will have this as a a DXF file or some form of vector that you can download from their website and import in order to be able to use and create toolpaths with. So we can see the full cross-sectional shape here. Now for the purpose of us using this to create a toolpath we only need the right hand side half and we don't need the top span. So we need to do some edits before we can actually begin to use this. So I'm going to select the vector now and just go into the node editing mode which I can do from the menu with node editing and I need to initially delete the top span so I'm going to right mouse key over the span and use the delete span which can be done with D on the keyboard and you can similarly see that although it's not shown as a data point we have a midpoint here so I'm going to literally box pick that point okay, because I need to cut the vector at that point so I've selected it and now I'm going to right mouse key over that point and go cut vector and I now have two different pieces so I'm going to go back to my selection mode and just select the left hand side half and delete that away so at this point we now have just the vector we need in order to add that into the tool database what we need to do now is to take the vector and add that into the tool database as a new form tool so I'm going to select it on the screen then come up and raise the toolpath menu move across to the tool database now and we can see that we've got our lists of tools all broken down into separate subsets depending upon the tool type and one particular area is form tools here so I'm going to choose to locate my new tool from within the section so I'm going to select the form tools the header for the actual subset and go new I'll then be presented with this tool info where I need to select the type of tool so in this case it's going to be a form tool and immediately the form opens you can see here the cross-sectional shape has been shown um, across its full diameter I can now come up and change the name so I'm going to say RPOG it is a form tool it's given me the full width diameter there 3.375 inches the cutting parameters have not been specified but usually you can get these from the manufacturer that you've bought the tool from in this case the pass step that I'm going to set is 0.2 of an inch the step over is not really that specific. I'm going to leave this as one inch, but it's it's unlikely that you're going to use this tool with multiple step overs. It's most likely to be used with just profiling alone. And now we need to add in some speeds and feeds, which once again are probably likely to be uh, obtained from the tooling manufacturer. So I'm going to go 12,000. Feed rate I will set to 80 and a plunge of 30 and I will just give this a tool number of one in this case we're not using a tool changer so I'm going to apply that now so you can see that immediately has been added into the tool database in fact I'll just give the name for the so I'm going to call this panel because we already have one in there so I'm going to call this panel and apply so we can see that one there and OK that so we've added that tool in now and I can now go ahead and set up the vector that I'll need to profile to create the required raised shape. Okay in order to create the internal vector which we will profile around we need to come back into the drawing menu. So from the top menu here I'm going to flip across the drawing menu we can see on the left hand side and now come in and select the vector and we're going to look to offset that inwards in this case inwards by one and 3 eighths of an inch 1.375 and offset inwards 
this represents that inner profile now and we are going to profile outside of this line using the form tool okay so we're going to select that inner profile now come across and raise the toolpath toolbar and initially set up our material it's going to be three quarters of an inch thick our XY datum is going to be in the lower left position and our, our Z0 is going to be from the material surface and I'm currently happy with my clearance and plunge move so I'll OK that form and come down and raise the profile toolpath form and our start depth will be zero the top of the material and we're going to cut down by a depth of 0.5 from that height the tool we're going to use is not a 0.25 inch ML but the RG the RPOG panel form tool that we created from the vector cross section and you can see that immediately we have three passes will be created because the parameter the step down parameter was set to 0.2 therefore the number of passes will be three based on the cut depth of half an inch we're going to machine outside that profile so we're going to protect protect that inner profile shape which is all important and come down now set the material the toolpath name to profile OG and calculate if I just rotate the screen now we can immediately see those three passes there we've got rounded corners and now I need to preview that toolpath so I'm going to preview that now on the material and we can see we have a couple of issues that need to be pointed out here one of course the tool is moving outside of the material boundaries therefore we need to be aware of any clamping or fixturing that we might have and make sure that we don't violate that when we come to machine it in reality and secondly that although we have a nice crisp internal edge uh, against our profile anywhere moving towards the outside of that corner we're getting rounding here so the tool is rounding that corner so we're not going to get that nice mitered shape that we're looking for once we've cut the full door from the material so I need to come back in now and change one of the parameters so I'm going to close out the preview and come back into the toolpath now I can do that two ways by double clicking on the text here or clicking the edit toolpath and that will raise the current the current selected toolpath I don't need to change any other parameters apart from the section corners here where I'm going to say okay I want sharp corners now and I'm now going to calculate now remember that we had rounded corners here when I calculate now you can see we clearly have a sharp edge to that toolpath of course the preview doesn't reflect that change yet so I'm going to reset that preview now and then press play on the new toolpath and you can see in the corners we've got nice crisp mitered edges which represent the desired shape so we now need to finish the job by creating a profile toolpath that will essentially cut the door panel from the material so I'm going to select the outer vector now and come back to the profile toolpath icon and we'll just create a new toolpath but we'll need to change the parameters here the start depth will no longer be at the top of the material because we've already cut some of the material away so this will be 0.5 and then we're going to cut a further 0.25 of an inch down from that so essentially all the way down to the bottom of the material now the tool that we're going to use is not the form tool that we created but I'll go for our standard 0.25 inch end mill and we can see that two passes have been set here but if I come across now and maybe increase that pass depth to 0.25 of an inch that should reduce from two passes down to one pass so we're just going to create one pass all the way around the outside so outside is set and I'm just going to switch off corners we don't need sharp corners set and we will then change the toolpath so this will be profile and we'll call this outer and we will now calculate so we can see that toolpath created there and we will then press play and we can see that we've got our finished door there we could of course added tabs depending upon how the material is being fixtured but in this case I'll assume a, a, a vacuum fixturing therefore we did not need any I can now double click on the waste material to actually remove that from the screen and then we have the finished door panel showing the beautiful external molded shape that's being created by the custom RPOG tool that we created from the cross-sectional vector. This brings this particular tutorial to a close.